Gregory and Kelsey, thank you so much for joining me on the Active Towns podcast. Thank you, John. Excited to be here. Glad to be here. Thank you. And 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 I, I have to apologize, uh, Gregory, ahead of time because uh, Kelsey and I kind of know each other. She's been on the podcast a, a couple of times or on the channel a couple of times. Uh, so guess what? You get to have the floor first uh, in terms of introducing yourself. So uh, uh, please share with the audience who's Gregory. Hi, uh, I'm Gregory Bertrand. I am in Austin. I've been living here since 2021. Uh, I'm a writer uh, and a cyclist, those being my two main hobbies. I go on pretty lengthy rides on Saturdays and Sundays. I just did one to Maynard today, which was, I think, about 50 miles or so. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> now, are, are, are you are you excited about the 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 shared use path, uh, the cycle path that's going to be uh, built all the way out to Maynard? That's going to be great when that's complete. Right. I am. Yeah, it would make getting out there a lot easier. I had to um, use uh, old highway 290, which, you know, there's no shoulder to speak of on there. So I'm, I'm just kind of pretty much almost riding in the grass trying to not get hit by a car. It was a lot busier than I thought it would be on a Sunday morning. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, more of those uh, facilities in place and making it, you know, safer for all ages and abilities to be able to get around. Okay. Kelsey, your turn. Uh, Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself uh, to the audience for those who do not know you. I'm Kelsey Hughes. I recently got an e-bike. So I'm an e-bike enthusiast, but my longest ride is probably 12 miles. I'm not on Gregory's level at all. Uh, (laughs) But I've been an organizer with Rethink 35 since 2021, I believe. And I even remember when Gregory signed the petition and said he wanted to be a volunteer. I hopped on a, a video call with him, got him involved. And here we are, what, two years later. Yeah. We've come a long way. Yeah. Uh, for those people who are not, you know, familiar with uh, Rethink Thirty Five, I'm going to pull up the website here real quick and uh, and you know have have you just kind of relate a little bit about it, and then we're going to relate a, a pretty fun sort of story that you know, kind of popped up uh, over the last couple of weeks. But uh, let me pop over here to the, the actual website. Uh, who would like to just? Give a little bit of uh, of background uh, to to Rethink Thirty Five, and then we'll dive into uh, our little fun story. Rethink Thirty Five is what's called a Highway to Boulevard campaign. So we started out with a plan to reroute I Thirty Five instead of going directly through downtown Austin. And if you scroll down a little bit, John, there's an image we can look at that shows this. Um, yes, so the red line what is currently I-35, and it goes directly through Austin. And Gregory is going to talk a little bit why, a little bit about why that's a problem here in a bit. Um, Our plan is, why don't you instead go around the city? So SH-130 is a nice new highway that exists, and it's currently a toll road. So our plan is, why don't you designate that as the interstate highway so that people who are traveling through don't have to go directly through downtown? We've kind of shifted our approach from that is exactly what we want to let's stop this project however we can and let's work with the community to figure out the plan that we really want. But this is a plan that we want studied as Rethink 35. Fantastic. Great. Yeah, we'll use that as just a, a quick little overview to to what Rethink 35 is is really all about. Uh, but we, we do have a, a really fun thing to kind of start this off because we can bring in uh, just a little reflection of uh, something fun that 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 took place. So Trevor Noah was was, uh, you know, presenting here. Uh, who wants to talk a little bit about uh, how this all came about? Yeah, so I'll go ahead and, and tackle that one. About yeah, about a month ago, uh, you know, before this, a little bit before this tweet was posted, we were doing what we call canvassing, which is what we do about, we try to do once a month or so, just get out in the community or knock on doors, hand out flyers. And that's what we were doing, was handing out flyers down by the, what we call here in Austin, the hiking bike trail, which goes along uh, the Colorado River and 
around Lady Bird Lake. And it's a really beautiful area, nice, relaxing. You know, people are running, walking their dogs, cycling. And so we thought it would be a good place to hand out flyers and raise awareness of this expansion um, directly to the people who use this trail probably, you know, daily or for their training or their, their um, recreation. And I was kind of wandering up and down a little bit, looking for people to hand out flyers to, you know, people who weren't running, didn't have headphones in, who looked like they would be, you know, they would want a flyer or be open to talk. And I just happened to um, walk, lock eyes with this uh, lady while she was walking by. And then I, I kind of glanced at the man she was walking with and he had these sunglasses on and I think he had his hood up, but something about his face, it's, it was like, I, I know him. Do I know him from a job I was at or something? And I just like, I couldn't place his face. And then, I don't know, half a minute later or so, I was like, oh, I think that was Trevor Noah. And I was I was shocked. And I just kind of stood there uh, wondering to myself. And I walked up to a few of the other volunteers we had. And I was like, I think I just saw Trevor Noah, guys. And they're like, oh, no, yeah, we saw him too. And apparently he was in town for uh, a comedy show. And I don't think he mentioned us by name exactly, but he did uh, talk about highway expansion during the show and asked who was opposed and who was for. And from from what I've heard, it was like 95% people were opposed to it. And there's a bunch of rapturous applause of, you know, no, don't expand this highway. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. And, and of course, this tweet went out, uh, you know, after the, the show there at, at Bass Concert Hall. And uh, Anika is just like, yes, <laughs> even more of a fan <laughs> of Trevor Noah. <laughs> yes. I think it just shows how much, number one, the community doesn't want this expansion. Our elected officials don't want this expansion. And how much the education regarding highway expansion and induced demand has succeeded. People know that more lanes means more traffic. And the area of highway expansion, I believe, is coming to an end. Yeah. And uh, why don't we address uh, the ribbon? What does this ribbon uh, signify? Right. So along with handing out flyers, we had other members wrapping ribbons around the trees. And I believe you can see that tag on there on in the front of it. I think that's a name. Uh, a member of ours called Santiago came up with the idea of putting names on the trees to give them more of a personality. But these were to signify that these uh, old, I believe, pecan trees are gonna be removed for the construction. Mm -hmm. Destroying the beautiful environment that we have out there. Yeah, fantastic. That's the that I, I wanted to make sure we we caught that aspect of it, and I'm not sure if 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 Tre Trevor also you know caught that aspect of it the the fact that you know what y'all were out there were not just you know talking about the expansion but also talking about the fact that uh, some of those trees were going to be lost. So yeah, yeah, that's great. I see we have our our visitor, our guest star on here as well. Yay! Yeah, Buzz is here. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. Uh, all right. So, Gregory, you're going to kind of lead us uh, through a conversation talking a little bit more deeply about the history of it. But I know that we have a sort of a setup a video uh, from Council Member uh, Natasha Har Harper Madison. This highway that stands right behind us was built to exclude black and brown Austinites from opportunities, access and resources. And here we are 60 years later. I want you to tell me what has changed. I hear dead silence because nothing has changed. It's 2023 and the same people with power want to expand this highway to a staggering 22 lanes. We must tear down this divisive, environmentally damaging and racist highway. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, remind me which rally this was. It was the press conference to announce the wider won't work rally. So this was probably in October of 2023. Okay. 
Okay, so wider won't work. And then I, for two years ago, I recorded the Heal the Scar um, uh, press conference that was also at Stars, and so that that's also there. So I'll make sure to include a link to this video as well because that was a wonderful uh, rally. And uh, and of course, I have our other video here, uh, Kelsey, the, where, where you and Adam and I were out on bikes, uh, riding around and really trying to get a feel, uh, in the field for what was going to be happening with, uh, the I, I 35 expansion, if it goes through. So I wanted to make sure that we gave that a plug and I'll also include the links to these two videos in our show notes and on our, in our, um, description, uh, for the uh, video here too. Okay. So fantastic. Let's get back over to, uh, uh, the the materials that we have and really when we take a look at this you know there's a great deal of history here Gregory going all the way back to the 1928 uh, you know Kopk and, and Fowler City uh, plan creates the the quote unquote Negro district um, talk a little bit about the context of what I-35 signifies um, so a scar is a perfect way to, I think, uh, describe I-35. And what it was really built to do is to segregate and divide East and West Austin. East Austin now and at the time in 1928 being a predominantly black and brown area. And as you can see on the visual, there are all those pink little dots those are the clusters of the black community that the black community that was forced over into East Austin in 1928. And what this plan did was to establish a quote unquote Negro district that had all the facilities and conveniences, so to speak, and jobs for all these, you know, African Americans, so they didn't have to cross over into West Austin. Yeah. Yeah part of the very disturbing legacy that is, uh, you know, the, that line, that R I I 35 line. And it, it really, you know, signified the fact that, uh, you know, prior to I 35 going in, this is what we had. This is East Avenue. Correct. That's, uh, East Avenue, I believe at 12th street. I'm not sure if that's North or looking North or looking South, but, what I wanted to highlight with in this image is just how much easier it is to cross an avenue rather than a, uh, a highway. Whenever I'm cycling and have to go from east and west Austin, there isn't really any good options other than the uh, trail that's near the convention center that goes under the highway. And even that isn't really perfect because You've got to cross under the highway by the feeder. There's no beg button to get traffic to you to you. There's no stop sign, and so it just makes it makes it hard to kind of enjoy your ride. And you know that's just me cycling for leisurely exercise. You know we have people over in East Austin who don't have a car. Public transportation going east to west, bus lines aren't perfect really you have to take maybe one or two different connections. And so it's already hard enough to cross over the highway. So now making it, or potentially making it 22 lanes, it's gonna make it even worse. It's just gonna exacerbate the problem and segregate people more from opportunities that they could have in downtown or West Austin. Whenever I see this image and other images of East Avenue the way that it was before, I, you just have to marvel at how much green space was there. And I know that, you know, oftentimes there would be picnics in these areas and people would have celebrations in, in this grassy median area. You know, it it really wasn't, you know, a uh, the barrier that you're talking about, Gregory, is now it's literally a physical barrier and it was intentionally done that way. And then you see this and you're like, oh, my gosh, yeah, you're totally right. The community was was that much more stitched together and you could easily cross through that. But it also was a much more humane space. I mean, it, you, it's almost like parkland. Definitely. Yes. 
Right. And so this is from the 1960s. I don't believe it's the same exact area, but as you can see, it, there's already the skeleton of I-35 being built here. And you see those underpasses, which even then don't look so pedestrian friendly. I don't really see a sidewalk there, just some, you know, grass or sand. And it doesn't even look like they're planning to build a sidewalk. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just really astounding. You know, it, the fact that it's, it was done in the, the manner that it was done and the intention that it was done. And then at the same time, adding, you know, salt to the wound, the injury that is the scar is the fact that, oh, and by the way, we have no intentions of, of, you know, accommodating anybody who's not in an automobile. Yes, Which is, that's yeah. quite striking. Very, very, very striking and unfortunate. Um, who would like to set up this video for us? It's a Bill Bunch at our Wider Won't Work rally, which we held in December, I believe. November. November. I'm sorry. November of last year. And he is talking about the kind of civil nature of I-35, right? Correct, Chelsea? Yeah, I think he's calling out to the federal government about, yeah. Okay, yeah, let's, let's hear Let's hear from Bill. The U.S. Department of uh, Transportation can step in and tell TxDOT they did it wrong. They can stop this project and demand that we have honest studies. And the Biden administration and Secretary Buttigieg specifically have told us that climate is important. They've told us, they know that when these interstates were built through central cities, that communities of color were literally destroyed and that they need to set that right. And if they sit on the sideline, they're letting it become insult to injury, far greater injury. It's time for them to walk the talk. And of course, Bill Bunch, uh, for, for those who are, are not familiar with him, he's associated with uh, the Save Our Springs organization. And I'm going to pull up the, uh, the actual website for the recent uh, Strong Towns uh, episode that, that just took place and uh, where Adam uh, uh, was, was actually being interviewed, uh, Adam Greenfield, of course, with uh, the Rethink 35, uh, one of the co-founders of Rethink 35. And I want to pull this up because Bobby uh, Levinsky um, is the attorney and the attorney who also is uh, associated with the Save Our Springs organization. And so I do want to call this out and encourage people, please be sure to... Uh, Tap into that and, and take a listen to it. Uh, it's great because since Bobby is an attorney, he can talk a little bit more from an attorney's perspective about the the, the cases that are being brought forward. Uh, we're going to talk it uh, talk about it, um, uh, you know, from from our perspective. Uh, I just want to make sure I, I, I'm not assuming neither of you are attorneys, correct? I no. am not. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Just making sure. I didn't want to make any, you know, I, I didn't want to make a bold assumption. So uh, y you never know. You might be hiding it. <laughs> never know. You just never know. There, there's plenty of people who are attorneys who uh, uh, they, they don't broadcast that they're attorneys. But uh, yeah, so I do encourage folks to to, to make sure to go and, and uh, tune into that. Um the, the next up in our in our uh, suite of visuals is, of course, uh, a, a letter that went out to Secretary Buttigieg, uh, which was one of the things that, you know, was being mentioned by Bill is, you know, basically saying, hey, calling out and saying, hey, we really would like the USDOT to take a stand. So who wants to cover uh, what this is all about? Segwaying off of what um, Bill Bunch said, you know, there's a long history in America of using highways to divide and segregate uh, communities of color from opportunities. And it's pretty much, I don't even know if you would call it an open secret right now, it's, it's just history. Right. And that being said, 
you know, to continue this legacy by expanding the highway, it's going to exasperate the problem. And on that basis is why we filed our, our, our civil rights complaint. And Pete Buttigieg being the U.S. DOT or the, you know, secretary of uh, transportation, we, you know, want to make him aware that, hey, you know, th- this can't go forward. Yeah. Yeah. So we filed a civil rights complaint. We are going to refile it on February 28th. And individuals and groups can still sign on to the letter before that date. So if you go to rethink35.org. And let's uh, let's actually pull that up right now. Let's go to rethink35.org. Boom, which, by the way, everybody, you can obviously see that we have that URL on screen right now. But here we are. OK, Kelsey, continue. These are our two action alerts in the yellow. So if you click sign the complaint, you can sign this complaint and add your name to it. You don't have to live in Austin or the Austin area. Anyone can sign this complaint. And the most powerful thing that can happen is for more groups to sign on to the complaint. So you can see on the right hand side, you can enter your name. And on behalf of name of group, this is where you would enter your group name. And we're still collecting signatures until February 28th. Um, This shows a few of the groups who have signed on. Fantastic. Excellent. Well, I I know a YouTube channel that's going to sign it. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. Can't wait. That one. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, a lot of... A lot of the letter, what I find really interesting is the idea of the lack of affirmative action. If something has been created to divide a community and to cause harm, there is an obligation to repair it. Exactly. So our our complaint is to say that there is an obligation to right the wrongs of the past and not continuing to make the same mistakes and to hurt the same people over and over and over again. We want to move forward, not backwards. And this has happened throughout the whole country, right? Like interstates were built through downtowns for this reason. And so I think that this is something that freeway fighters across the entire country, across the world, even perhaps should be paying attention to. Yeah, well said. Well said. I, I I'm lingering on this particular uh, uh, place here on the website as well, just because I also want to uh, uh, to to mention again, you know, the 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 other action item which is there, which is donate to the lawsuit. We're going to talk a little bit more uh, in detail about that at the very very end, but I did want to just mention it since we're right here. I think we've got another video uh, queued up uh, in this next spot. Uh, Who would like to set this up? What is this all about? Yeah, so this is Bobby Levinsky, who you mentioned earlier, John. So Bobby Levinsky is Save Our Springs, and he was on the Strong Towns podcast last week. I learned so much from listening to that episode. I thought it was incredible, and Bobby has been such a huge ally to us in this fight. And so now we're going to talk a little bit about the lawsuit and we'll let Bobby kind of lead that introduction into the lawsuit. Fantastic. Let's hit play. We're trying to raise attention to the U.S. Department of Transportation through the administrative complaint, specifically about the environmental justice concerns, as well as taking our actions to protect Austin's environment, including the Colorado River, parkland that was largely unaddressed by TxDOT's evaluations, the water quality of the Colorado River, where the storm water will be taken from downtown and dumped yet again into East Austin. TxDOT has not committed to actually treat that water quality to any sufficient measure that would protect the environment. Air quality concerns, are also largely unaddressed. The Environmental Protection Agency has issued guidance saying, hey, this particulate matter that these cars, these emissions are generating and being 
flown into our neighborhoods is impacting the health of people, especially those with high incidence of asthma. And that's what we have all along the I-35 stretch, and that should be no surprise to anybody who has looked at the data for the last 60 years. TxDOT, we've had enough. We're suing you. Thank you. <laughs> I love that end line. TxDOT, we've had enough. We're suing you. <laughs> Yeah, so Bobby talks a lot about some of the key points in the lawsuit, and I wanted to touch on three of them in particular. The first one being particulate matter, which is also known as PM 2.5. So this is a screenshot from the Travis County resolution that was passed, I believe, in September. Um, So Travis County is backing the community and opposing the I-35 expansion on the basis of the environmental impacts. And so with this expansion, TxDOT has to abide by NEPA guidelines in their reports that they do. And so they have these thousand page reports about the impacts of highway expansion. And TxDOT did not study PM 2.5 or particulate matter. And from my understanding, particulate matter are these really small molecules that come off of tires, other things. We breathe them in and it's not good for us. And TxDOT has an obligation to study all environmental impacts of expanding the highway. And they failed to study this after our city and our county have asked them to do so. So that is key point number one in the lawsuit. I'll, I'll say one more thing uh, about uh, uh, particulate matter uh, PM uh, 2.5 as well is that, yes, this is the, the particulate matter that comes off of from tire wear and brake wear. And, and, and you'll notice we're not talking about pollution from tailpipes. And so even if we go to an all electric uh, vehicle fleet, which is going to be decades and decades and decades away, we would still have this uh, pr- problem with uh, you know PM 2.5. And many are, are saying that it, the problem might even be worse because the vehicles might even be much heavier because of the uh, heavy batteries that are in uh, many of our EVs. And so uh, that's one of the things that I always like to, to sort of emphasize is that this is, we're not talking about tailpipe emissions necessarily, although there may be some emissions uh, associated with uh, PM 2.5. Mm-hmm. So. Absolutely. Thanks, John. I mean, I think this was a fantastic resolution that Travis County passed. And you know what? They only were able to do this, I believe, because the community has their support. And this was years in the making of gaining signatures, speaking out. Um, Every action matters and leads to something. Yeah. And I think one of the most important uh, aspects of this part of the the lawsuit, and, and and Bobby said it, you know, it talked about it and addressed it quite well in in that interview on Strong Towns, is that the, it was very clear that Textod did not, in good faith, actually go through truly the process of looking at what the damages would be. Uh, you know, they just kind of brushed it aside and say, oh yeah, no, 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 no additional concerns from an environmental perspective, uh, even with expanding, uh, you know, the the lanes to the level that they are. And, uh, you know, and, and you know, that that's just not true. And, you know, you and I know, uh, Kelsey, because we saw it when we were riding bikes, uh, in that one video, we've got a, a, an elementary school literally right there. And with the expansion and with the expansion, it's going to be even closer <laughs> to that school. Yep, exactly. Okay. Who'd like to address what we're looking at here? We do see that image that we were talking about earlier with, uh, you know, the bypass potential with uh, I or SH-130, which could become the new I-35. <laughs> uh, but uh, we've got a couple of other images on screen here. Uh, who'd like to talk about this? Yeah, this is the second key point of the lawsuit that I wanted to talk about, which is that TxDOT did not sufficiently study the community alternatives. And the two community alternatives are Rethink 35, which we explained is a highway to boulevard campaign. So switching the interstate highway to a different road 
And then that frees up the space for the current I-35 downtown to be imagined into something else. So the bottom image is a rendering that we had done several years ago. This doesn't mean this is exactly what we want. This is just to spark imagination for what it could be. And the second community alternative that TxDOT did not study is the Reconnect Austin plan. Reconnect Austin has been around for over 10 years and they are the image in the top right. And their plan is to put the interstate underground and put a cap on top of it. And then essentially you could have a boulevard on top with bus lanes, bike lanes, park area, et cetera. But it's just also a way to connect or reconnect Austin. Hence the name. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 you know I'll say something to address you know that that plan of of reconnect Austin too is when we look at that image in the top right here too is one of the things that they looked at and studied was the fact that we see some of the 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 buildings that are there is they studied and and talked about the fact that we can actually bring a bunch of land back into uh, productive use and bring those lands back into, uh, you know, basically productive from the standpoint of tax revenue too. In other words, as it's, is, as it's sitting now and as it could sit in the future, if it gets expanded, that's all going to be land that is essentially a liability to the city and to the county and to the state uh, versus being productive land that is actually helping, you know, increase the vitality of the community itself. Yeah, that would be incredible. Yeah. All right. So earlier y'all mentioned the water issue <laughs> and that's what this is all about. Issue. Yes. Okay. So with these big projects, the DOT has to release a draft environmental impact statement and so this has three alternatives. One is a no build. So what happens if we just don't change anything about the highway? And it evaluates the environmental impacts of the alternatives. The final environmental impact statement is where they choose one of those. And then they give all the details about that one. Well, they chose a final plan for the final environmental impact statement but they included a new drainage tunnel that they didn't include in the draft plan and they had no public input on that plan. And so we are alleging that they should have gone through the correct process, gained public input through the community, but they did not. And so this is a major change and a lot of people do not know that this is going to happen. So they are building a drainage tunnel underneath Susser Chavez, which is a pretty main road here in Austin that goes in East Austin. And so all of the storm water that comes off of the highway will go into this tunnel and it'll go all the way east. And then the outfall site for that water is on the east side of Highway 183 at the end here. And so they are going to filter out all of the trash. So imagine like a mesh barrier in a tunnel. They'll get like plastic bags and water bottles and big things, but then the water is going to be dumped into the river at that point. So all of the oil that is on the road, anything that is on the road is basically going directly into the river. And this is the site of a nature preserve. So the next image is a sign from that nature preserve, um, a wetland habitat of the Colorado River. So there's birds, there's fish. This is supposed to be a place where animals can thrive. And we're just going to dump water from the highway there without treating it. And not only that, we're dumping it in East Austin. And there's a history in Austin of dumping things on the east side to protect the west side, which is kind of what Gregory was talking about, about what West Austin was the white Austin. East Austin was the black and brown Austin, which didn't have as much power and say to stop these kinds of things from happening. And one of our volunteers, Miriam, was at this nature preserve um, last week, and she said she saw so much wildlife there. Birds and animals, they were thriving. And so the third main point that I wanted to talk about is that TxDOT is dumping untreated water into 
our natural habitat, which is really sad. Yeah, that's their plan. And, and this obviously is not cheap to be able to create an entire system um, to be able to deal with the stormwater runoff and then uh, obviously not cheap to create a drainage tunnel. Um, and we, we've got some history in, in the city of Austin of, of dealing with tunnels and drainage and stormwater and, and, and flood protection because, you know, we had to do a very similar type of a situation in, in downtown, uh, in, in the Waller Creek situation that we had there. But so this is, you're absolutely right. This seems like it was a bait and switch and a little bit of uh, a slam dunk in the sense that, yeah, if you're planning on dumping it, you know, towards the wetland area in a sensitive area, not to mention the communities that are down river, you know, from this, because it, it it's not too, too much further. And then you're, you know, into a, a whole series of communities where the vitality and the vibrancy and water quality are essential to the, you know, those communities. Absolutely. And I don't know if they know about this. Yeah. Well, they do now or they will, or I they should. They, they should. <laughs> <laughs> if they watch this, they will. <laughs> I know we have one uh, one more video uh, from our, our, our council member, or excuse me, our former council member and our current uh, representative to the uh, uh, House of Representatives, uh, 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 Greg Kassar, uh, to, to close us out. Any setup to this particular uh, conversation? I kind of wanted to tie back to what I said in the beginning, which is that the era of highway expansion really is coming to an end. And all of the movements across the country feed off of each other, learn from each other, inspire each other. And Gregory and I are here representing Rethink 35, but we are really representing the entire movement right now. And we are really begging you, begging all the people watching to support us because this is our one chance to get this right. And I know you pulled up the donation page earlier. Yeah. Um, you want to go back is, to there? Let's, let's, yeah. go, let's go back this to there. This is really the way to support us right now. And it's so awkward asking for money. But we are a grassroots org. The community donated $10,000 to us, I think, within three days, which was huge. Unfortunately, this lawsuit is going to be extremely expensive. We need a lot more money. And so I am just begging the community to pitch in. And even if you don't live in Austin, um, this is going to help your campaign in your city to see what happens here. Just to add on to what Kelsey is saying, it just takes one success for people to be inspired. You know, this could help. I know Houston is dealing with I-45. Uh, a win for us could be a win for them. It could be a win for, you know, what's going on in Portland or Seattle or anywhere that is dealing with uh, highway expansion. Um, these issues don't exist in a vacuum. It's it's all connected. And like Kelsey said, it affects all of us. So even if you're living in Florida or California and you don't, you want to see your city be more beautiful and walkable, you can, donate to our lawsuit because it's going to help you potentially down the road. Yeah. And, you know, we're standing on the shorter shoulders of, you know, other places that have fought, uh, you know, freeway expansions and also have fought to have, you know, freeways torn down. And I, I think that that's a, a great point. And for those of you who are tuning in and you're not from Austin, thank you for watching this and listening to this. And yeah, to, to your point is that if we're able to be successful with this, we will be successful with this. And when we are successful with this, then obviously it is going to uh, make it easier for other communities to heal from similar types of, uh, you know, situations, as well as hopefully prevent bad things from happening in other communities. Let's uh, listen to our Congressman, Gregory Kassar. And I walked into this rally just with this incredible new surge of hope and of energy because I thought back to over eight years ago when I became an Austin City Council member 
and there wasn't a majority of us standing up against uh, I-35 expansion. There wasn't a rally of hundreds of people ready to stand up against TxDOT. This movement has grown so much. It's brought so many people together, and I know that together we can win. What do you guys think? I love it. It was, and I have to, I have to give you a, a shout out there, Kelsey, because you uh, really helped pull that rally together, and it was a tremendous success, and it was so inspiring to see. <laughs> Thank you. Gregory helped as well. Um, it was so much hard work from me, Gregory, so many volunteers on the campaign. I mean, it was the hardest thing I've ever done, I think, but so incredibly worth it. So incredibly. It, it was really neat to see so many members of the community, you know, coming together like that. Um, I, I did the filming. And so that was one of uh, my two cameras that I had set up. Uh, and my other cameraman uh, that was there is uh, Preston Tyree was run, running one of my two big cameras. And that was from another one of my cameras. And then I just turned over all the footage because I didn't have time to, to edit everything. And then you all, you know, as a team pulled together and, and did a bunch of edits on all of that and put it together. There's a whole series of short little clips of uh, all the speakers that were part of that rally. I'll make sure that I include uh, links to those videos as well. Uh, Gregory, final thoughts from you before we uh, wrap everything up. I would just like to always reiterate that it, it's not too late. You know, even even when it <laughs> looks like you're, you know, you're, you use a sports metaphor, even though it looks like you're down 20 points, it just takes a little bit of momentum to start a comeback. You know, we're, we're going to be fighting this and fighting this and fighting this. Yeah. Well, and since we're just, you know, a couple weeks out from or a week out from the Super Bowl, which literally went into overtime, you're, it's a great sports <laughs> yeah. metaphor. Is It's so never true. too late. Yeah. I didn't even yeah. mean to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Kelsey. Just please donate. That's all I got. <laughs> yeah, donate, donate. <laughs> and feel free to reach out. Um, I'm on Twitter. Gregory's on Twitter. You can email Rethink35 if you feel inspired or you want help on your campaign. We are always here to help because we are in this together. Yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, we didn't mention at all uh, the social media uh, campaigns that are going on. And of course, uh, when I had you on the, the channel for uh, uh, an interview before, Kelsey, we, we talked a little bit about or we talked extensively about the social media campaigns that were part of this movement and liter literally leveraging different social media platforms. So let me just turn this over to you for a real quick little plug about, you know, the fact that you all are quite active on uh, a variety of different platforms. Yeah, we have Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. I believe that's it. Yeah, I'm actually running the Twitter account right now, so I'm having a lot of fun. Uh <laughs> And, and I've got the Twitter uh, account pulled up here. So folks, if you're not already, if you are out on Twitter slash X, make sure you do, uh, you know, follow along with the activities there. And uh, and, and again, I had mentioned earlier the, the short videos uh, that are out on the YouTube channel that Rethink35 has. Uh, we'll make sure that we have all those links as well. But to, to your point, uh, you know, that we were also making is that some of that video content migrates over to TikTok talk to. Yes. Um, I try to post videos of those clips on TikTok and on Twitter, but they're super powerful. They're super inspiring. And I think a share goes a long way. I think about how much content had to be shared so that eventually Trevor Noah understands induced demand and talks about it in his comedy show, right? Um, it may seem like retweeting or reposting something isn't doing anything. But I think it is changing the conversation. Yeah, I think you are absolutely right. Gregory and Kelsey, thank you so very much for joining me on the Active Towns podcast. Thank you, John. It was a pleasure being here. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this special episode on Rethink 35. And if you did, please, hey, give it a thumbs up. 
leave a comment down below, and most importantly, share it within your network. We need to get this out there. Every single community around the globe that is dealing with these types of situations uh, will benefit from this particular fight. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me a Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.